Ready to see some amazing experiments? Yes! A triumph! We're going to show you how your incredible body works. Just don't try anything you see here at home. Today we're looking at how we power our bodies. Now this experiment is to show you what happens inside your body every time you eat. Right, now son, what I needed you to do is take that tube and when I give you the instruction blow, I want you to blow into it. On blow, I go. That's right, you go on blow. <laughs> son, why did you do that? You said blow. But now we have to set it all up again. For this experiment, we're using lycopodium powder to represent food. OK, Zand, blow torch on. Are you ready, Zand? Ready! Blow! Wow! Whoa! So what's going on? The lycopodium powder has mixed with the air breathed out by Zand, been ignited by the flame, causing a chemical reaction which releases lots of energy. Now, although there's no fire inside you, Chemically, this is what happens in your body when you eat. Your food is fuel, just like the lycopodium powder. It mixes with the oxygen and releases energy, which is what allows you to do all sorts of things, whether it's just breathing or running around. But how much energy do you need? And is there such a thing as too much? Well, we're going to find out. Your body is a bit like an engine, so it needs fuel for all the things it has to do. To show you what I mean, I've rigged up a simple engine system, and I'm going to need Zahn's body. Oh, well, no problem at all, Chris. My body is ready at the service of science. For many years, I... Actually, Zahn, I don't need that body. What? But you just said... I've got mini Zahn to help me. What? You've clamped his legs. Is that a wire in the back of his head? What is going on? Mini Zand is hooked up to an engine system which represents what your body does with the food and drink that you consume. I can do what he's doing. Stop it. When you eat and drink, your body uses it to create energy. So, with this engine, this hose full of water represents your food and drink. And when I squirt it onto the wheel, the wheel will turn, creating energy which is sent to the light bulb on Mini Zand's head, which represents his energy levels. OK, so what now? Well, we're going to see what happens when different amounts of the fuel are pumped through to Minizand. First, this is what happens to Minizand when he eats just the right amount of energy. It's a bit like if you eat a decent breakfast, lunch and dinner. So you can see we have a nice balance here. Minizand's light is on and everything is working perfectly. Your body takes the fuel and turns it into the right amount of energy you need for an average day. But what about if Mini Zond has had a really busy day and he forgot to eat lunch? That does happen. Good question, Zond. Well, let's find out. Now I'm putting less water on the wheel and it's not spinning, so the light bulb isn't coming on. This is not good. Exactly. That's what happens if you don't eat enough. Your poor body has no energy to do what it needs to, and as a result, you feel tired, and it can mean your body won't be able to perform all its functions properly. Well, that could make him ill. I think you need to give him some more fuel right now, Chris. Yes, but I think we also need to see what happens if you eat or drink too much, like that extra chocolate biscuit I saw you eating earlier, Zant. Let's have a look. So now there's plenty of energy to power Mini Zant and his light bulb. But we're putting so much fuel in, it's getting fuller than it should be. Exactly. And that's what happens when you eat more than you need to. Your body has to find something to do with all that excess fuel. Something tells me Mini Zan is about to change. Well, the excess fuel creates unused energy, which gets turned into fat cells. Mini Zan is becoming overweight. Oh, no! Poor Mini Zan! So we've seen how when you drink and eat food, your body combines it with oxygen to create energy. And that energy fuels the things you do every day. But it's important to get the balance right between what goes in and what you use. Too little and you can become underweight. Too much and you can become overweight. But unlike Mini Zand, no one becomes too thin or too fat overnight. It takes a long time to happen, so as long as you keep things balanced most of the time, your body will be happy. And of course, if you hadn't clamped Mini Zand's legs, he'd have been able to do some exercise and he'd have been fine. Uh, what are you doing? I'm taking Mini Zand for a run. But first, I'm going to buy him some decent gym gear, a jazzy sports top, some good shorts, some sweatbands, a pair of decent trainers...
Zond, I thought you were kidding. Ouch. As part of today's special show, we're looking at hormones. Just don't try anything you see here at home. It's Chris. Can I have a biscuit? I don't want one of your disgusting pocket digestives. OK, fair enough. I'd like a custard cream. Well, I don't know where he keeps his custard creams. He hides them from me. They're on the desk in front of you. Oh, yeah, here they are. I've counted them. Can you write them down in the custard cream logbook so I can keep track? Chris, why are you sending me all these ridiculous text messages? I'm trying to work. Well, I'm glad you asked me that, Zant. It's not just because I want those custard creams, although I do want them. You've written them in the logbook now. It's because today's lab is all about hormones. And like text, hormones are messages, but they're chemical ones sent around your body. You can't control them any more than Zand could control the number of texts I was sending him. You have hormones from the moment you're born, telling the different cells in your body what to do. Your pancreas makes the hormone insulin to control sugar levels in your blood. And your adrenal glands produce the hormone adrenaline when you're excited or scared, preparing your body for immediate action. Ouch. Do you know what happens to your body when you go on a roller coaster? <laughs> exactly what I was looking for. This is a case for investigation. Ouch. Being scared, you might love it or you might hate it, but whichever it is, big changes happen with your body. And I'm going to show you what those changes are by riding one of Britain's scariest roller coasters. Roller coasters are exciting. Sometimes we scream, sometimes we puke. So why do we keep going on them? We've evolved over millions of years to either fight dangerous things or run away from them. And it's the reward that our brain gives us when we survive something that feels dangerous that keeps us coming back for more. I'm taking on a terrifying ride at Alton Towers to see how my body deals with fear. So I'm going to be wearing this sensor, which is going to be measuring my heart rate, my heart rhythm, my breathing rate, loads of different stuff that is going to be telling me what's happening with my body and measuring essentially how frightened I am. OK, that's my heart rate there. At the moment, it's a normal resting heartbeat. Keep an eye on it. Let's see what happens when I take on this scary ride. Now, very quickly, my body has started to feel fear. And when you're scared, your heart rate rises. Look at my beats per minute. They're going up rapidly. That's because my body has started to release adrenaline, a hormone that prepares you to deal with a dangerous situation. Adrenaline comes from the adrenal glands at the top of your kidneys. It tells your liver to release more glucose to your muscles, to give them energy and make sure you're charged up and ready to face your fear. <laughs> that was completely terrifying. My heart rate's very high, but as I finish the ride, it goes up even further. Let's find out why. As the ride starts, my heart rate remains fairly flat because I basically don't think the roller coasters are all that frightening. But the ride is so cleverly designed that I become completely convinced my legs are going to be chopped off and I'm definitely going to die. That's when my heart rate almost doubles and I'm totally terrified. My body is responding in exactly the same way it would if I was being attacked. And that is the fear response. But here's the thing. At the end of the ride, this point here, my heart rate goes up another 10 beats. And that's because I'm so happy I survived the dangerous situation. That's the reason we love these scary rides. Because once you've survived it, you get that feeling of extreme happiness and a spike of adrenaline, and that's what makes your heart go faster at the end. So what happens to your body when you go through the same scary experience a second time? I'm going to go on the ride again. So with frightening situations, you can either make it worse and get more frightened every time it happens, or you can learn that actually nothing bad's going to happen to me on a roller coaster. I didn't die last time, so this time I'm going to control my fear and be less frightened. This is the beginning bit where my heart rate previously was very normal, and this time it is a bit exciting. 
on this second ride, my heart rate isn't jumping up as quickly as the first ride. And that's because I know what to expect, and therefore, my fear response is not as dramatic. Now I've learned that nothing bad happens, I can really control that fear all the way through it. And you can do that with exams, you can do that with films, you can do it with anything you find frightening. You can just realise that actually very few things are really dangerous and you can stop being frightened. If you're not frightened, you can keep your head together. So during the second ride, my heart rate only goes up to 112 during the most exciting bit of the ride. And at the end of the ride, I don't get that extra bump in heart rate. And I didn't feel that amazing euphoric sense of I've survived something really dangerous. And that's the thing I'm now craving. Luckily, there are loads more rides.